Hi, it's Dr. Sarah Gottfried. I wanna to talk to you today about high blood pressure or hypertension. If you've been following the news on COVID-19, you're aware that having hypertension is a risk factor for mortality from COVID-19. We don't totally understand the mechanism, but I think it's important to understand that more people are at risk of high blood pressure and have a diagnosis of high blood pressure than ever before. And so I want you to be aware of what the numbers are how women and men are different, and also some of the lifestyle changes you can make if you start to get into that yellow zone or the orange zone of elevated blood pressure. So let's start first with the numbers. Many of you aren't aware that the guidelines have changed for high blood pressure. They changed in 2017 after the publication of a study called SPRINT. And I'll link to the author's names and the years of these publications so that you can read more if you want. So we know that the guidelines have changed, and here's the new numbers. Normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. So that's considered normal. Less than 120 systolic blood pressure, less than 80 diastolic blood pressure. So that's the green zone. That's where we all wanna be, 120 over 80 or lower. Now we know that elevated blood pressure is basically where your blood pressure is between systolic 120 and 129 over 80. So that's elevated blood pressure. That's the yellow zone. The orange zone, which is now considered stage one hypertension, is where your blood pressure is 130 to 139 over 80 to 90. Stage two hypertension, this is now the red zone, is basically 140 over 90 or higher. So the old rule that was drilled into our heads was that 140 over 90 or higher was high blood pressure. Now we need to adjust to this new graded stage system where 120 over 70 and lower is considered normal. And these higher levels, greater than 120 over 80 is considered uh, elevated. So what are some of the differences between men and women? We know that men tend to have higher rates of high blood pressure before age 50. And then for women, somewhere between 50 and 55, we catch up to the men. Now, I think it's important to realize that high blood pressure is not a disease. It is a number one risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and it's really the manifestation of an abnormal vascular system. So what's starting to change with the female vascular system between 50 and 55? Hmm, I wonder. Yes, perimenopause and menopause. So we know that this change in sex hormones, especially estradiol, is having an effect on the vascular system. We still don't totally understand the mechanism for this. And we also know that uh, hormone therapy, in this case, the randomized trials were mostly conjugated equine estrogen and medroxyprogesterone acetate. We know that hormone therapy is not approved for primary or secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. So there may be some window of opportunity where it makes a difference for a woman to take, I would say, bioidentical hormone therapy in that case, as I talked about before, I like for that to be transdermal estradiol with oral progesterone. I think that's the most proven. It's also FDA approved. So there's a window of opportunity where that may help in terms of the female vascular system. We also know that once women start to have a higher rate of high blood pressure, their blood pressure is not as well controlled as it is for men, especially as women get older. To me, that's a huge gender difference that we need to address. So let's get into some of the solutions because this is a lot of time on the problem and I think focusing on the solutions is also important. So what can you do? Say you're starting to get into that yellow zone where your blood pressure is 120 to 129 over 80 and you wanna do something about it. Or maybe you're a 140 over 90 person, you're already on a blood pressure medication and you wanna maybe avoid going on multiple medications. And so you wanna make some lifestyle changes. As always, you wanna to talk to your primary care provider about this or whoever's prescribing your high blood pressure medicine. Never stop any medication without talking to the prescribing clinician. But here's some of the things that you can do. We know that stress reduction is super helpful. And as you may be able to tell from my current outfit, I just finished yoga. Yoga is a great thing to do in terms of stress reduction and um, helping to reduce kind of the, the sympathetic nervous system and how it activates blood pressure. 
That's the job of the stress response of the sympathetic nervous system. And the more that you can have balance between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, that fight, flight, freeze versus rest and digest system, the better your health will be. So stress reduction is really great. Eating more green leafy vegetables. We know that more vegetables is the answer to most problems. We also know that reducing your sodium intake, particularly from processed foods, can be very helpful. We know that um, losing weight, if you have a body mass index that's 24.9 or higher, it can make a big difference to lose weight. And I've got a couple of books to teach you about that. In fact, I'm writing one about the ketogenic diet for women. I also have the hormone reset diet that you could uh, check out if you want some help with ways losing weight. Um, the other thing that's really important is quitting smoking. I hope none of you are smokers, but we know that smoking definitely elevates blood pressure. And so that's an important thing to do. Now there's some supplements that help as well, but when it comes to people getting into, into that danger zone, I think you